Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, today we're going to do a quick technical exercise and I want to show you uh, how you can actually model um, lures on surfaces. So we're going to look at uh, some profiling options and how we can extract some profiles using planes. And these are going to be um, aligned to a surface that you can um, actually model any way you want. And I'm going to show you how we can also uh, change their profiles. And we, we're going to loft them. Uh, I'm going to show you how to build uh, some of these. Um, let me make an example and show you quickly what it looks like. So it's going to um, look like this. So the, the parameters are going to be exactly the same in the vertical direction. Uh, but it's going to have some nice uh, effect with the twisting of the of the sections So um, let's get right to it I'm actually going to build this from scratch and show you some cool applications on how you can use this later on uh, But for this to work we actually do need um, Do need a surface and uh, for that actually we can first do it on a single curve then we can extract sections of a surface if we want so to make it work on a curve all you have to do is model a curve and plug this into grasshopper let's set it up like this and i'm going to divide this curve um, into some some points so that number could be anything you want so we can specify a low or high number but I'm going to start with something around 5 so that we can see how the planes are going to turn. Um, the way we are going to build those profiles on the curve directly is to use perpendicular frames. You can actually find um, perpendicular frames under curve perpendicular frame and you can see that there is a T parameter here. That T parameter is actually associated to um, how we divide the curve. So because the curve um, if, if it's normalized, if I reparameterize the curve, then these T parameters would be from 0 to 1. And that actually designates the location of the point along the length of the curve. So we can also use those parameters to get uh, planes aligned with the curve. Now these planes are really important because that's um, we can we can actually use construction planes to build more custom geometries. So because we have a plane there, we can actually build a profile there and use the profile to build any type of complex shape we want. And uh, for this exercise, we're going to build just a simple arc. And the way to do it would be to use something uh, like point oriented. So the point oriented tool actually takes in a plane which could be any plane and using a UNV and W parameter it gives you a point so think about these as like XYZ coordinates and they are oriented to a plane so I'm going to start by giving some um, simple numeric values to see how this point evaluation moves on on the on the plane you can see that in the U direction it goes in the X axis if I plug in a V parameter that takes it in the Y direction of the plane. So the first point I need is something that goes along the X axis, something like this. And then I'm going to multiply this by a negative number and copy the same thing on the other side so that we can get the same uh, point offset uh, in, the, in the same way. And then I'm going to make a copy of these two. And rather than connecting it to you, I'm going to connect it to the V parameter. There's some, something uh, basically that gets the, um, the vertical profile, right? So we can actually constrain it like this. Now we're going to be build two arcs and those arcs actually are arc three point. So we're going to start from this point go to the top point and go to the end point. That will be our top arc. And for the bottom arc, all I need to do is replace this middle point here so that we get um, this type of um, shape. Uh, it's it's like an almond shape of almost. Uh, that's going to be the section for our profile. Now, if I loft this, then 
you can see the top profiles are lofting pretty nicely and the bottom profiles as well and that actually gives me the um, the structure for today's exercise so that's uh, basically how we can model any type of parametric uh, section on that curve so I can control its width I can control its height so it basically gives me kind of a dynamic way of controlling this louver but I want to do something a bit more uh, complex than that so what I want to do is um, actually take these planes and rotate them in a random fashion so that we we have a, a more interesting loft so that the profiles are twisting along uh, the curves themselves so that segment we are actually going to add it somewhere here so after the frames are made we can actually rotate them um, on the construction plane themselves so it's going to give some sort of a twist to the profiles themselves so we could do um, rotate plane here so I'm going to take the plane and for the uh, for the angle of rotation you can actually supply any type of parameter here so you can supply let's say 90 degrees it could be 90 degrees but we're going to convert it into radians because that's how plane rotations work and all I have to do is, um, if you look at the rotated planes, you can see that this controls how much they rotate in the z-axis in the uh, clockwise direction, right? So that's uh, what the rotation is all about. And I can connect these to the planes of the profiles, and this will actually override how our profile is aligned to the curve. So now I can control its alignment. I can actually give it some sort of a twist um, now, we can actually use this for a bunch of applications. We can also develop some sort of a field attractor when we multiply these in the vertical direction. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to randomize the rotation. So to randomize it, uh, we can actually add a random here. And for this to work, we need a domain. So I need to construct a custom domain. And for that custom domain, we can give it some sort of uh, angle. So we can have random values between 30 degrees and 90 degrees. So this could be the domain of my random generator. And the amount of random values we need is actually six. So I can either add one to this value. So I can do addition and add one to it like this and attach this to the random. And, or I can get the list length of the divided parameters. And when I connect this, now you can see um, that the, the rotation is actually, uh, we can control how much rotation we want in this profile. If we put zero uh, for the domain, there won't be any rotation. But if I start giving some rotation, you will see that it's actually starting to twist. Right? So we, we're getting some custom shapes being formed along the profile because each of these planes are rotating. On their construction plane. Um, this is actually um, this is actually it. What I'm going to do next is actually to model a, a surface. So you can just get a surface. Let's say I'm going to work with this, and I'm going to place the surface here. Set one surface, and I want to extract the sections of the surface. So to extract the sections, there are a bunch of ways you can intersect the surface with uh, planes. Uh, but one method I like to use is isocurve because they are uh, restricted within the domain of the surface itself. So uh, for this to work, you need to supply some UV parameters, which could be points. Um, so I'm going to get the surface. And uh, this is kind of a UV coordinate on the surface. So if I reparameterize the surface, then the domain of the surface would be set between 0 and 1. So all I have to do is supply the points within the range of um, 0 and 1. And if I give, let's say, um, Y to this uh, point calculation, then if I supply the UV, you can see the U curves are these, um, let's see which ones they are. So the U curves are the horizontal ones and the V curves are the vertical ones. So we're going to work with the U curves. And if you want to customize how many um, divisions you want, you can also, um, sorry, I changed the domain, it needs to be number. So you can also change the number in the range, which will divide more curves from the, uh, from the surface. 
and all I have to do is connect this to the profile. Of course, it looks a bit crowded because we have the rotated planes open, but once you um, hide it and adjust some of these parameters, you can see the multiplication of this effect. So I can control how many of these I want in the vertical direction, how much uh, resolution or change I need in the horizontal direction, and I can also control the total amount of rotation, right? So I can customize between um, kind of randomized rotation versus uh, more straight uh, planes. And we can also control the profile thickness here. So you can see the depth, uh, we can also change it here. And the cool thing about working with planes is if you rebuild the surface and distorted some of these points, it will still work because our construction is bounded by the surface geometry. So here you can see I'm giving some sort of uh, bulging distortion to the surface. Um, but the, the nice thing about working with construction planes is they're restricted to the surface itself. Now the top one is actually a bit, um, we need to just adjust it slightly. You can just select these points and nudge them slightly. Sometimes it fixes the alignment of the plane. Let's see. It's exploded again. Maybe we can increase the resolution. That one is a bit fixed. I think the at the end it's kind of given me um, a different orientation, but overall this would work when, if you have like a tube, uh, tubular surface. I'm actually going to show you how you can uh, do that as well. So um, let's bake this geometry. Let's see. So these geometries we can actually bake these two, and the top one is um, not aligning correctly. I wonder why that plane is twisting. It's probably because the we rebuilt the surface, but here the plane orientation is somehow misleading. So now it's fixed. So if I if I move the points a bit, I think it's it somehow starts to um, twist the alignment of the planes. And this one is actually working a lot better. So we have two uh, sections here you can see so this is how it looks like right so these are twisting on the surface itself uh, which is pretty nice you can also take this and do another cool application so last week I showed uh, a shape finder which is uh, basically it was a script that uh, gives you any type of amorphous shape and you can actually combine these two scripts with each other. So if I bring this in here, this will be uh, this could be the surface that drives our geometry. I'm going to actually simplify this a bit so uh, we can play around with it. I'm going to disable this guy and simplify this somehow. So we have some undulation there and then I'm also going to add some profiles here. So let's say we want to apply um, apply those types of um, geometries along the surface. All I have to do is take the lofted shape and let's see, connect it here. And let, we have to find out which curves we're going to use. So the U curves, um, let's see if they are correct ones. The U curves are actually correct, but we actually do need more. So I'm going to increase the amount of curves in this direction. And let's hide everything that's happening here. So we just look at the, um, these profiles. And we could just enable these and give it a bit more thickness. So we can actually increase some of these parameters. So let's make it all the way up to five. So this controls the depth and this controls um, the thickness. So we can increase this as well. And the rotations are happening in a random fashion. So I can also customize how much rotation I want here, uh, how much resolution I want here. So if we 
if we decrease it, there will be less points, less twist in the vertical direction. Let's keep it at maybe eight. So that's the shape. Uh, you can see that the geometries are twisting pretty nicely. Um, you can actually use it for various applications. Um, I'll be curious to know um, if you would like to share them. You can always tag Paramatic Online Instagram account and you can share them on social media. So we can, uh, I can share it on the page as well. Uh, but you can use uh, the script to make some cool applications, cool twisting geometries. Uh, I hope you liked this tutorial. It was, I hope it was helpful. Uh, and if you have any questions regarding this tutorial, uh, please uh, write in under the comments below. And I'm going to, um, I'm going to follow up with some uh, more cool exercises for you uh, this week. So take care.